Uh, hello. Good. Good evening. Uh, how are you? Good. So, mm. so welcome everyone. Um, so now we have three choice. So I will give you a lot of choice and ask you to raise your hand so you can get a little bit of exercise with your hand also. <laughs> <laughs> so three choice. The first is practice meditation first. We practice together. Second, maybe I will tell you my story, how I learn meditation. Third, how to meditate. <laughs> so which one first? <laughs> Practice first, raise your hand. Okay. My story about how to learn meditation. Mm. How to meditate? Hmm, many of you don't like to meditate. <laughs> okay, I think my story about how to learn meditation. So, when I was young, around seven, eight years old, I had the panic, panic attack. So, I was looking for a solution. And then, um, my father, was a great meditation teacher. So um, I thought maybe I should learn meditation from my father. But first I thought, oh, maybe I'm too young to learn meditation. So I discussed with my mom, should I ask to teach my father to me meditation technique or not? And my mom said, yeah, good idea. But I still thought, oh, maybe I'm too young. My father said, oh, you're too young. Or maybe you're stupid. You are, you know, I will not teach you meditation. So I was afraid. So then, one day my father said, hmm, you want to learn meditation, right? I said, yes. Who told you? And my father said, your mom did. So my, my mom, Ask my father on behalf of me without my permission. <laughs> so, but he was so happy. He said, wow, good. You are very young, but you're interested to learn meditation. So you can ask me any question, and I will teach you meditation. So the first um, I learned meditation, which is uh, breathing meditation. Watch breath, one of the, my first meditation techniques. But what I found is very boring. I sit there and watch breath, breathing in, what time? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, my friends are playing down there, you know, and I can hear their voice laughing. But I will sit there. I thought it's already 15 minutes but actually five minutes only. <laughs> so, I like the idea of meditation, but I don't like the practice of meditation. Feeling very bored. So, when I meditate, it is, um, I have good feeling after that. It helps for my panic. But then, I cannot meditate too long. So my meditation is on and off, and my panic also up and down, up and down, up and down, like stock market. <laughs> so that when my panic comes, I try to meditate. So what I do is, so when the panic comes, I say, hello panic, get out. I'm meditating, <laughs> breathing, and panic becomes stronger sometimes, louder. So 
Then I was a little bit disappointed, you know. I thought meditation, it help, helps my panic. But actually not. Then I went back to my father. And I told all this, um, my experience about the meditation with my father. And my father said, don't say, get out to panic. So you have to welcome the panic. For the meditation, panic doesn't become obstacle for meditation. So panic is okay, not panic is okay. I thought, wow, interesting. So then I changed my style, style of meditation a little bit. So what I did is I begin to say welcome to my panic. So when, when panic comes, I was meditating and I say, hello panic, welcome. Much better. So I was very happy. So that eventually what I did is, hello panic, welcome. If I say welcome, then you will not come again, right? <laughs> <laughs> so the, my motivation is to become the same thing again. So I learned meditation when I was nine, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So in, when I was 13 years old in India, a place called Shirabling, Monastery. So they're, they're going to start traditional three-year retreat for three years. So I asked um, His Eminence Thais Trumbachi, one of the, my important teachers, to have permission to enter three-year retreat. But I'm, I was a little bit afraid. Maybe he said no, because I'm too young. And I asked my father to ask Thais uh, Trumbachi. So Thais Trumbachi accepted. Then I can able to join the retreat. So the main point is, if I can able to go into retreat, then my laziness will not come. Because I have this laziness always with me, you know. So then I enter the three-year retreat. First one month, wonderful. Not lazy. I was so happy. One month and one week, lazy begin to come. After two months later, oh, lazy is all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> so back to, back to be before, my habit has become like same like before. Although we have sessions, but inside session, first a little bit and slowly. <laughs> Sleep. So. <laughs> So not only that, now my laziness and my panic, they too become good friends. <laughs> and now my panic become worse. Then I thought, what should I do? I still have two more years to go. That's the first year, you know, beginning of first year. So I have two years and um, eight, eight, nine months. So I thought, what should I do? Then I remember the teachings from my father and all the other teachers, they told me that, don't fight with the panic. Make friends. And panic become support for your meditation. Panic become your teacher. Panic cannot become obstacle for meditation. Why? The essence of meditation is awareness. And awareness is like space. And the panic is like cloud. Cloud. Or the weather, weather in the space. So I heard of that three, four weeks before, there's a snowstorm, right? Here? So very, very cold. 
snow, storm, wind. But now, today, wonderful weather, right? I brought good weather. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. So, the <laughs> snow storm can change the nature of space or no? Cannot change, right? The space cannot change by good weather, bad weather, blue sky with sun shining, or tornado. You don't have tornado, right? Hurricane? No? Sometime? Snowstorm? Um, but this cannot change the nature of space. Space always free, always present, pure, always pure. So the awareness is just like that. And this awareness is <coughs> behind of all the thought, emotion, perception, feeling. So of course, behind of panic also. Panic is just like snowstorm, snowstorm, five, six weeks before. We have <coughs> snowstorm, right? So I remember all these teachings. So then I decided to, to say, welcome, really welcome from my heart to my panic. Um, I thought, OK, now from now on, I'm going to learn how to live with my panic. Not try to get it up, not try to block, not try to fight. So I sat in my room because I cannot join group practice. We have every day uh, two hours of group practice. Morning, one hour, half, one hour, evening, or something like that. So when I join group practice, my panic becomes worse. So I stay alone in my room and really welcome my panic, stay in awareness. After a few days later, me and my panic become very good friends. I'm, I'm feeling kind of like exciting when the panic comes. The symptom is there. So you know, from here, heart beat jumps faster, boom, 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 and then tight here, get dizzy, sweating, and um, feeling of like uh, when you're in the aeroplane, then the aeroplane face, uh, facing the turbulence, like this, <laughs> like that, right? Feeling like that, but, th but it doesn't bother me. Normally, the b when the before panic is almost going to start, I feel panic or panic. <laughs> now is it coming again? What should I do? Meditate. Breathing. <laughs> it doesn't work. You know. <laughs> now, hello, okay. Come, 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 welcome. <laughs> And then, oh, interesting. <laughs> awareness still there. Continued awareness, okay. So, very interesting feeling. Then, then I can able to join Guru practice. That was wonderful. And after a few weeks later, me and my panic become very good friends. Then something happens. Something bad happens. Should I tell you? Bad news? <laughs> Not the happy ending. <laughs> it's okay, bad ending? No problem? So the bad, en bad ending is, after a few weeks later, panic says goodbye. <laughs> Me and my panic become very good friend now, and panic doesn't have good heart, say bye-bye, you know. <laughs> and panic gone. So I miss my panic. Panic become my teacher, my friend, my support for my meditation. So I learn a lot from my panic, actually. Today I'm here, maybe because of my panic. And I really believe this meditation technique changed my life. So I believe that can change other people's lives. So that's why I've been teaching meditation all the time. Not tired. I have passion. Okay, so now my story about 
how to learn meditation is finished. So now two choice. <laughs> <laughs> how to meditate first or practice first? How to? First, raise your hand. <coughs> mm. Practice? Oh, you don't like to practice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so how to meditate first? So as I told you, the essence of meditation is awareness, right? So do you know awareness? So how many of you know awareness? Raise your hand. Hmm. And how many of you don't know awareness? Raise your hand. Okay. And how many of you, mm, maybe I know, maybe I don't know? Raise your hand. Okay. Actually, I think you all know awareness. Should I give you an exam or not? Yes? So those who say, I know awareness, of course you know. So you pass. <laughs> and, and those who say, I don't know awareness, do you know you don't know awareness? Or no? Those who raise, those who raise your hand saying that I don't know awareness, right? So do you know that you don't know awareness? Yeah, that's the awareness. <laughs> so if you know, you don't know awareness, and that is the awareness. <laughs> so those who say, I don't know awareness, meaning you know awareness. So you also pass. <laughs> and those who say, maybe I know, maybe I don't know, right? Not sure. Do you know you're not sure? If you know you're not sure, so there's also awareness. So you also pass. <laughs> so actually, all of you pass. So congratulations. <laughs> hmm. So now, <laughs> no? awareness, essence of meditation. What is essence of meditation? Awareness. And you know awareness. Right? Those who know awareness, you know awareness. Those who don't know awareness, you know awareness. Those who are those who not sure, you know awareness. So as I mentioned before, awareness is like space, isn't it? The space cannot be changed by cloud. Beautiful cloud, ugly cloud, dark, Bright, it doesn't change. It's always there. So now you prove that. The awareness is always there, whether you know, whether you don't know, whether you doubt, whether you're not sure. It doesn't change awareness. So awareness always present, always there, and always pure. So, therefore, for the meditation, it doesn't matter. Good feeling, like blue sky with sun shining. Or it doesn't make any obscure by bad feeling, like snowstorm. Or doesn't change like mixed temperature, like doubt. So they all are in awareness, okay? OK, so now the problem is we have one big problem. So the problem is, hmm, hmm, should I tell you the problem? <laughs> or you, you want to find problem by yourself? Or should I tell you? If you find by yourself, it's better, actually. Quite difficult, but uh, it will stay with you. But if I tell you, you understand, then after a while you forget. So which one better? You want to find by yourself, or should I tell you? <laughs> 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 so, 
So if I tell you, raise your hand. Okay, if you want to find by yourself, raise your hand. Okay, more. Want to find by yourself. Okay, good. So for that, I will give you five minutes of discussion time. Not now, not now. <laughs> so the discussion topic is essence of meditation. What is the essence of meditation? Awareness. awareness. So what is awareness? Space. Just like space, right? For the experiential wise, awareness meaning knowing. You know what you are thinking, what you are feeling, what you are doing, what you are seeing, what you are hearing. So just knowing, knowing, pure knowing. So there's awareness. So you all have awareness all the time. Before you learn meditation, you have awareness, right? So, the essence of meditation is awareness. And awareness is with you all the time. So now the big problem is, then why you have to come here to learn meditation? <laughs> yeah, that's the discussion topic. <laughs> you have awareness all the time. Then why I have to learn this awareness? I mean the meditation. Meditation is the essence of awareness. Then awareness with me all the time. So what's the point? So what things change after learning meditation? I have awareness all the time. So what meditation makes something change? Right? So that's the discussion topic. And you have to discuss this for five minutes. And you can start to. Two people, three people, doesn't matter, okay? You can talk to strangers, no problem. <laughs> Don't be shy. Okay, how, um, can you hear me? <coughs> so, how was the discussion? <laughs> got the answer? <laughs> more confused or got, <laughs> more confused, raise your hand. Oh, not many people more confused. Mm. Normally more confused is better. And how many of you got the answer? <laughs> <laughs> Anyone want to share your discussion? Anybody? Yes, here. Yeah. Microphone. And thank you. Shall I repeat that? Yes. Okay. Um, so you spoke about awareness of awareness and awareness of unawareness. Some of us are aware that we're unaware and others are aware that we're aware. And if we're aware that we're aware, we're also <laughs> aware that we're unaware. Is that confused enough for you? <laughs> and so for, for myself, I, I like to be aware of my awareness and unawareness as much as I can. And I, I want you to teach me how to be more aware. You don't need like more aware. Like a child aware. with a toy. Yeah. You don't need more aware because you have awareness all the time. <coughs> well, when my mind wanders... Still you have awareness. I'm, 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 I'm aware of where my mind is wandering, but I'm not aware I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be here all the time, okay, please. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> is that a tall order? <laughs> okay. Okay, good. Next. Thank you. Thank you. So, oh, here. <laughs> Yeah. Hello, Yunbuchi. 
Um, so what we were discussing actually four years ago, um, before my daughter was born, I was meditating and I felt my awareness was really like seeing the cloud mm -hmm. coming, staying mm -hmm. and going. Now my daughter is two and a half years old. I have a very busy, li busy life. I felt like my awareness like shooting star. All right. I, it's, and that's where I am now. All right. Maybe I'm just attached to that mm -mm. being aware, and I try to find some answer how how to continue. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Yeah, thank okay. you. Somebody here. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, which one? It's coming, coming. He's running. <laughs> there. Very fast. <laughs> okay, the first lady there and then second lady there. Yeah. Uh, well, to put simply, to be aware without fixation. Mm -mm. So we're aware of space, mm -mm. like awareness, rather than awareness being constantly trapped in the clouds. Mm -mm. So you're, you're saying that normally we are fixed, uh, we have fixation, but yes. now we need to learn without fixation awareness. That's right. So awareness gets, whatever there's cloud, it tends to get caught up in the mm -hmm. cloud. So mm -hmm. to be aware of the space like, mm -mm. Um, mm -mm. yeah, and just okay. clouds is the content of awareness. Um, I think uh, meditation is for, um, you know, we're already quite aware of certain things to varying degrees or aware that we're unaware. Um, for me, I find that it's about um, accepting what I'm aware of. So sometimes those two things can be at conflict, but if I meditate, they become uh, more together. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Okay, there. We were discussing how uh, awareness is a mix between physical sensations and yes. mental thoughts. Mm -mm. So it's uh, a unity rather than a separation. Mm -mm. And so many people are aware of what they're thinking, but mm -mm. they are disassociating with what they're feeling. Mm -mm. And this is, uh, I think, uh, the real um, way to a sex, mm -hmm. uh, a sort of a different platform where mm -hmm. you're aware of both your thoughts and your sensations. Mm -hmm. And the fact that uh, because these has evolved, the, the, the sort of uh, thinking part has evolved a lot more than the feeling part, mm -hmm. especially in the world that we're living in, that we're constantly thinking. But really the feeling part is the most primordial part of our beings. Mm -hmm. So to really be aware we ought to be in a place where we have a f sort of uh, awareness of both our physical sensations as well as our thoughts. Mm -mm. Okay, so up there and then here. So um, I was thinking why do we, why do we meditate? Mm -mm. Um, we already have the awareness before, after, during, yes. but we suffer. So I think it's something to do with suffering and trying to find the cause of suffering or, or the root of suffering mm -hmm. because it's, it's there now in our awareness mm -hmm. and I think suffering is something we want to deal with. So meditation, whatever it is, is targeted at that. <laughs> okay. Thank okay. You. There. <coughs> so, oh, yeah. Sorry. Already? Okay. So um, I came here because um, I am seeing awareness as a state of mind mm -hmm. to reach mm -hmm. and um, <clears throat> like looking for ways to how to not to see it as a state of mind to reach mm -hmm. uh, rather not to see it as an achievement but naturalize it okay that okay. expectation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So one microphone, please come down, one microphone here. Yeah. Is it to realize for yourself, well, 
along the lines of the fool who persists in his folly shall become wise. And it's to Pardon? to sort of run yourself out of steam chasing something that is it's like beating a drum in, in search of a future if. So you can come back and just know the thing for the first time, basically to exhaust mm. yourself All right. or to exhaust right. the seeker. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. So you're, there's a question. Is, is, is the purpose of it simply of so meditation? Now, now I will not give any answer. Okay. Because I'm the <laughs> <laughs> question later. Yeah? What we were talking about is, so the problem uh, is perhaps the conceptual mind that, mm -hmm. that we uh, kind of in the school taught to kind of label things and give, you know, abstract, um, you know, the things we aware into concepts, labeling them, and then those are very useful in our daily function to achieve things, to solve problems, but that also make our mind kind of lose touch of the reality. Mm -mm. And uh, so I think, so we thought that's a problem. Okay. Why we already have awareness, still come here to learn, so. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Last one. Thanks. Um, it seemed that the only time I ever achieved a very deep Peace in meditation was mm -hmm. through going straight through the middle of some very painful mm -mm. things. So, uh, and I don't seem able to do that at will. So I don't have great meditations. <laughs> but it you need to happen. look for one big painful thing. <laughs> 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 oh no, I just don't know how to work with them properly. <laughs> anyway, the other thing that it struck me very much when we were talking about awareness is I, I work with some people who have suffered very greatly because I'm a counsellor mm -hmm. and great traumas and they mm -hmm. their awareness they have well with all of us if it, it can happen to anyone the awareness splits off mm -hmm. from the present to such an extent mm -hmm. that it really goes somewhere else mm -hmm. and sometimes people don't remember what they experienced it's like having two or three personalities so it's called dissociation, and it seems like the opposite. It's like um, when, a, when something is so painful, we can't keep our awareness with it. Mm -hmm. So that's a th the theme of staying with the containing the pain or the suffering seems to be uh, something that's on my mind. Okay, okay, good. Thank you for all of you. So, um, so there's uh, many people <coughs> give wonderful answer. So the answer is about the, um, we have awareness, but then we don't know how to keep awareness with here, or we don't know how to make with, be with the non-judgmental awareness. We are too much in the head, cannot be in the feeling, um, so on, so on, right? So, now how, <laughs> how, can we do that awareness without judgment? Awareness connected with the feeling. And awareness without the uh, loss into the cloud. Right? How, how we can do that? So, if we say, normally, I need awareness, don't loss, be peace, you know, um, don't follow thought and emotion. It doesn't work. It's become the same like my meditation. First, my first meditation. But I say, ha hello, panic, get out. I'm meditating. <coughs> oh, it's coming, coming, coming. No good, no good. You keep quiet. And the panic becomes louder. So the most important point is, we all have awareness. Doesn't matter you have panic or not panic. Awareness always there, even while you have panic. Awareness is very present and free while you are having panic. And before you learn, not only that, before when you learn meditation, you have awareness, right? When you never heard of meditation, still you have awareness. Awareness is born with it since childhood. But the problem is, now, now I will tell you the, yeah? Should I tell you? Yeah. Mm. 
this is a big secret, you know. <laughs> so you need to promise that you will never tell anyone. <laughs> promise? <laughs> promise, raise your hand. <laughs> it's in my books, you know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the secret is <laughs> you all are very in. Ah. <laughs> the, se <laughs> the secret. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the secret is actually there's no secret. <laughs> Okay, I will tell you a secret. <laughs> we, although we have awareness, but we are not recognize our own awareness. So that's, that's the secret. So, there's no problem that whether we have this awareness or not. There's no problem. It's just like space. Whether we have space or not, there's another issue. But the issue is, we don't know space, and we are lost with the cloud, <coughs> lost with thought and emotion. <coughs> so now how to be with the space, first we have to recognize awareness. And that, to maintain that recognition, and that's the meditation technique. So we recognize, but we forget, we lost. But again, come back, forget, come back, forget. So. If you continue to maintain the recognition of awareness, that's the, uh, the result of meditation. Then your mind becomes completely free. The freedom, what we call liberation, pliable mind, walkable mind, mind become more calm, peaceful, not just peaceful and calm, not just peaceful and calm, become walkable. So all this quality comes, just recognize awareness and maintain that recognition. So once you recognize and try to maintain the awareness, that maintain the recognition, then you will have a lot of discovery within yourself. Wow. Wow moment. What do you call? Wow moment? Aha moment. Yeah. Aha. Ooh. Each time there's aha. The awareness will open up. Now, our awareness narrow, small, and it's become like child. Baby, baby. Easy to cry. Like something slightly wrong, not happy. Slightly right, oh, you almost like explore. Or sometimes you become frozen. Or you almost become melt. A little bit hot. Maybe outside. Don't see, people don't see you. But inside you are maybe crying. Outside. <laughs> inside you're crying. So <laughs> now our mind is like that. So what I call monkey mind. But as you connect with your own awareness, nobody's awareness, it's your awareness, and you have it, you have it. It's with you. So once you recognize more and more and more, awareness will open up. And then, you don't need to block thought and emotion. Not necessary. Even you achieve thoughtless or emo emotionless meditation, it is not the good meditation. You may become a little bit like a zombie. <laughs> Maybe happy zombie, you know. <laughs> so, not, <laughs> not use. Not, not too much use of it. So therefore, what we call the real meditation, you don't need to meditate. You just connect with your own awareness. Okay? So how to do that? So that we have to practice step by step. So first, we cannot really connect with the big awareness. So we have to connect with peace of awareness. So for that, 
now we will do meditation practice, okay? So now how to practice meditation? First, uh, please raise your hand, like this. So, do you know your raising hand? Yeah. Yes? So that's awareness. So knows that you are, just be, uh, to be aware of that, you're raising hand, okay? Is there any sensation in your hand? What kind of sensation? Cooling sensation, raise your hand. Right hand, I'm sorry, left hand. <laughs> okay, you know there's cooling sensation, right? So there's awareness. Or warm or heat sensation, raise your left hand. Okay, be aware of that. So that is also awareness. And how many of you, there's no particular sensation in your hand, raise your hand. Okay, if there's no sensation, just know that there's no sensation. And that is also meditation. Okay? So now how many of you having pain around here? <laughs> Raise your hand. Okay? Do you know pain? So that's the meditation also. You're aware of the pain. Be aware of pain. No need to look for pleasant. Unpleasant is also okay. Pain is unpleasant feeling. So just be aware of that pain, okay? So now put your hand down. Feeling relaxed? <laughs> pleasant feeling, right? You know that pleasant feeling? So there's also awareness. So now, in the awareness, warm is okay, cool is okay, no sensation also okay, pain is okay, relaxation also okay. All these are in the awareness, right? So you just need to keep connecting with the awareness. And don't, doesn't matter what kind of sensation, pleasant, unpleasant, neutral, positive, negative, virtue, neutral, it doesn't matter. Any kind of sensation. Just what you have to do, just to be aware of it. So that's the meditation. Understand? Okay, now we will do some more meditation exercise. So hold your hand like this. Any sensation? Maybe there's sensation. Maybe there's no sensation. So be aware of whatever there in your hand, okay? Join both of your hand. Be aware of tactile. And now rough. What do you feel? Warm, right? So faster. Now heat. Be aware of heat. Okay. What do you feel? Tingling, right? Be aware of tingling. And cooling also. Okay, now, left hand put down. And keep your spine straight. And, and bring your hand close to your forehead. Almost touch to your forehead. The hairs, hairs are touching, the, what do you call, pores, tiny hair, it's almost touching, feeling of tingling or itchy, something like that, right? So now please close your eyes, and please be aware of any sensation in your forehead. Okay, now, your right hand also put down. Continue to close your eyes. And continue to be aware of any sensation in your forehead. 
pleasant sensation, unpleasant sensation, neutral, or even there's no sensation, it doesn't matter. Whatever there in your forehead, to be aware of it. And now please move from your forehead to top of your head. And relax muscles on the top of your head. And be aware of any sensation on the top of your head. Now from top of the head to the back of the head, relax your back of head and be aware of sensation. Now please be aware of your face, entire face. Relax muscles in your face. Like cheeks, chin, ear, nose. And to be aware of any sensation in your face. Relax your neck to be aware of any sensation in your neck. Relax your shoulder, right and left, and be aware of any sensation in your shoulders. Relax your back from upper back to lower back and to be aware of any sensation in your back. Relax your chest and stomach <coughs> and to be, to be aware of sensations in your chest and stomach. Relax your arms, right and left arms, and be aware of any sensation in your arms. <coughs> Relax your legs, right and left legs and be aware of any sensation in your legs. (coughs) 
Now please relax entire your body and be aware of sensation in your body from head to feet. And if you cannot relax, no problem. Just be aware that you cannot relax. So if you know you cannot relax, that means you are relaxing. So, relax is allowed, not relax is allowed. <coughs> pleasant sensation is allowed, no pleasant sensation is allowed. Tightness allowed and openness is also allowed. Everything's allowed. <coughs> Don't worry there that there's mistake or maybe you don't know how to do if you feel like your mistake the mistake is in the awareness so awareness is beyond mistake it's always free it's genuine it is pure just like space So be yourself, don't worry. You don't have to pretend to be somebody or someone. Just be yourself, be free. You want to cry, you can cry. You want to laugh, you can laugh. If you cannot find awareness, then that is also awareness. Awareness cannot find awareness. So, there is no need to worry that whether you're doing right or wrong. Right is in awareness, wrong is also in awareness. So be free and be yourself. Now please open your eyes and rest your mind just in bare awareness. How was it? <coughs> easy or not easy? Easy, raise your hand. Mm. Not easy, raise your hand. So if you feel not easy, you know it's not easy, so that's the awareness. <laughs> um, and how many of you are confused? Raise your hand. Do you know you're confused? 
if you, con- if you know you're confused, that's also awareness. You're connecting with awareness, so you're allowed to be confused. And confuse, confusion becomes object of awareness. Just like cloud, another cloud. So, thought, emotion, sensation, perception, everything can be in the awareness. So therefore, of course, panic is one of them. Panic is like hurricane, hurricane, right? So hurricane come from space, stay in the space, dissolve back into the space. Hurricane is changing, but space cannot change. So panic come from the awareness, stay in awareness, dissolve into awareness, but awareness doesn't change. Panic, panic is changing. Right? So, next time if you feel panic, bring awareness to the body and special for the sensation. So for the panic, the sensation of... You know how to describe? (laughs) Pimilla? Great. So I don't have to tell you. And when you feel angry, go back to the sensation, body sensation. When you feel worry, back to the body. When you feel depressed, same. And when you feel pleasant, same. Aware of pleasant. So what happens? By awareness, if you connect with awareness again and again, automatically negative emotion will purify it. And your, what we call, we all have this um, basic goodness, our innate goodness, basic goodness, will manifest. So if you connect more and more with awareness, compassion will manifest, clarity will manifest, joyful non-conceptual mind, um, all the creativity, your innate talent, talents, also will increase. Just aware, be aware. <coughs> the practice is look like boring, right? Be aware, oh yeah, be aware, <laughs> be aware. What? Again, be aware? <laughs> Today, is it be aware? Tomorrow, also be aware? The next month, be aware. <laughs> I come here to learn meditation for feeling to have happiness. But this teacher, <laughs> technique is be aware. Be aware. How come this be aware and the happiness connection, you know? I cannot find connection between happiness and be aware. <laughs> Many people ask me a question. I come here to learn meditation, to be happy. But you teach me boring stuff, <laughs> which is watch your breath, be aware of your breath, and sensation. Sometimes there's not good sensation, you know. So the key point is, for example, when you see the river, that means you are out of river, isn't it? If you if you fall into, ri- into the river, carried by river, can you see river? You cannot see it. You, you kind of feel you're falling, but you cannot see the river, right? But when you see river, that means you're out of river. So, when you see the panic, you're not become under control by panic. But panic still might be there. The symptoms still there. So when you see the river, you don't have to block the river. Isn't it? Let river continue. But for you, okay. Hmm. Doesn't matter. River is calm or clear, clean, or dirty and uh, what do you call? Turbulence. It doesn't matter. But if you fall in the river, calm river is better. 
<laughs> dirty and the uh, turbulence, you know, not so good. And special, a river has balls, you know. What do you want? Boulders, boulders, danger. And if river become waterfall, <laughs> you die, right? <laughs> so normally, these negative emotions has a lot of influence for us. Positive emotion is better. Peace is good. Panic is not good. Because we are lost with it. We are one with it. We are one with this emotion. We are, we are lost in the river, carried by river. So waterfall is not a good idea. But if you see the river, that means you're out of river. So then waterfall is great, right? Many people, you know, take time off, ask boss to see the waterfall, right? Spend a lot of money <laughs> to see the water, waterfall. So you can see inner waterfall without spending too much money or free, you know. <laughs> so free inner waterfall, wonderful, you know. Hmm. So if you see the television, you are not in the television, outside the television. <laughs> Something like that. So then, slowly, slowly, you can find this awareness everywhere. With thought, with feeling, with emotion, with sensation. And you can see all these are coming in awareness, stay in awareness, dissolve into awareness. Awareness is the basis, always there. And awareness is free, just like space. So, therefore, um, so therefore, as I told you before, the meditation, actually we don't have to meditate. Just recognize awareness and maintain that recognition with object. Now, first, object is the body, special this sensation. Many people nowadays misunderstand about meditation. Some people think meditation meaning think of nothing, right? Concentration. <laughs> um, in Asia, many people think meditation is like concentration. Breathing. So, so if thought comes, become a big problem, you know. And you're telling yourself, don't think. And in, in the West, <laughs> should I tell you? <laughs> uh, no problem. <laughs> Meditation like this. Looking for peace, and peace will say, I'm busy. <laughs> you need to make appointment, you know. <laughs> peace will not come. Or some, some people, they do like, relax. Relax. <laughs> yeah. So maybe I, <laughs> I will teach you one very special meditation. Um, what is the special food in England? Hmm? Shish. Pushy pushy? What's that? Fish and chips. Ah. Any good vegetarian dishes? Pardon? Chips, cheese and beans. 
chips, cheese beans. Mm. So I will teach you very special meditation. <laughs> and this meditation called chips, cheese beans. OK. So do you want to learn? Chips, cheese, beans meditation. Quite long. Chips and beans, OK. Chips and beans meditation. So for the chips and beans meditation, there's one rule. The one rule is you're not allowed to think of this cheese, <laughs> chips and beans. Not allowed to think. You can think of anything else. Fish and uh, chips. Also, OK, you can think. Um, you can think about pizza, hamburg, uh, salad, uh, potato, whatever you want. And you can even think about your past, history, future plan. Everything, anything's OK, except cheese and beans, <laughs> chips. Cheese, chips, beans. <laughs> Cannot think. Not allowed, OK? For one minute. If you think of one second, you will lose this meditation. <laughs> so be, be prepared. So please keep your spine straight. Please close your eyes. Now relax your body. And be aware of sensation in your body from head to feet. <laughs> Everybody is laughing. <laughs> you can watch the feeling of laughter. Okay, now the main part of meditation. So I will say one, two, three. So when you hear three, no chips, cheese, beans. <laughs> one. Two, three, no chips, cheese, beans. <laughs> if you think of this one second, you lost meditation, okay? Cheese, chips, beans, one second, you lost meditation. <laughs> Don't say that. Don't think about cheese, cheese, beans, okay? Okay, done now. Now just relax. Okay, how was it? <laughs> easy or not easy? <laughs> easy, raise your hand. <laughs> not easy, raise your hand. Oh, big problem. Yeah, actually it's not easy. When you say, don't think, our mind will think. So when you say, no, cheese, chips, beans, then we will think about cheese, chips, beans. <laughs> and many, many different kind of cheese, chips, <laughs> beans will come. And they become more clear, more fancy, loud, right? So when you meditate, you, when you say, don't think, concentration, peace, doesn't work. So many people looking for, I'm meditating, and I need non-judgment state. So don't judge. Oh, judge coming. No, no. This is a meditation. Not judge. <laughs> Not judge. <laughs> so then judge will come. Oh, I need to connect with heart. No head. One, two, three. Heart. 
no, no, no. <laughs> then heart say, oh, I'm busy, you know. <laughs> you have to make appointment, then I will see whether I come or not. <laughs> so, for the awareness, no need. Everything is allowed in the awareness, so it's not, it is the real not judgment. <laughs> you don't have to meditate. Just is allowed, right? So then it's not judging. Judge is okay, not judge is okay. Heart is okay, head is okay. <coughs> Everything is okay. So then that is the freedom, that is non judgmental, and that is really connected with the deeper level of heart. The awareness is the deeper level of the heart. So then meditation has become very easy. Right? So now I will teach you one more meditation technique. So sometimes we need to, um, we need option. Because although meditation is very easy, but after some time we feel bored. Uh, again, the sensation. Mm -hmm. Yesterday also sensation. Today, gosh, sensation again. I like the idea of meditation, but I don't like the practice of meditation. <laughs> So if you feel like that, then need to change. So technique need to change. So another technique is sound meditation. So how many of you want to learn sound meditation? Raise your hand. Mm, good. So for the sound meditation, there are two steps. One, how to listen to sound. Second, sound meditation. Okay? So first, how to listen to sound. So can you hear? Everybody? If you can hear this sound, raise your hand. Mm, now you know how to listen. <laughs> so the first step is finished. <laughs> and uh, should I teach you second step? <laughs> Se <laughs> second step has one big secret. So. Should I tell you the secret? <laughs> the secret is... <laughs> the secret is sound meditation is already done. <laughs> Finish. You understand or no? How many of you not understand the secret? Raise your hand. Meaning? Meaning is, I ask you, can you hear the sound? You say, yes. So that is the sound meditation. You're aware of sound. Right? The ear and mind both listen to the sound. So that is the sound meditation. Only the object is different. The essence is same. The awareness. The awareness. It's just awareness is one. But when you use awareness with the body or sensation, then it becomes awareness of the body, awareness of sensation. Now you're using sound, and it becomes sound meditation. And it's, it can be visual object, can be smell, test, sensation, even thought and emotion also. But uh, thought, emotion, if you are new to meditation, you have to wait for a while. First you have to do this base, this, uh, foundation meditation, like feeling, sensation, sound, this one first. Okay? So now we're going to practice this sound meditation together. So please keep your spine straight. You can, um, if you have back pain, you can use chair, like me. As long as if you can keep your spine straight, a little bit straight, you know. Don't worry, a little bit like this, a little bit like that, a little bit like that, no, no problem. So just a little bit, relatively, keep your spine straight. Loosely, yeah, loosely. Right? Loosely keep your spine straight. And close your eyes. So first, relax your body. And relax meaning, not relax is also allowed. And be aware of sensation room sensation from head to feet. (coughs) 
Now, please listen to the sound. Okay, now finish. How was it? So sound meditation is better or the meditation with the sensation feels better? <coughs> sound better, raise your hand. Okay, body sensation, raise your hand. Okay, so it depends on the personality. So if you feel body is more easy, you have to begin with the body, a sensation in the body. If you feel sound is more easy, you need to begin with sound first. But even if you feel sound is good now, tomorrow, okay. <laughs> Next day, so-so. <laughs> Next day, gosh, sound. So you will, feel, you will feel bored. And then back to the body. You feel, oh, nice. I thought, mm, I have particular connection with sound, not the body, but actually sound is better. <laughs> you will feel like that after, after a few days later. So that's normal. So you need to change different technique. Although there's many different techniques, but actually only one. Right? What is the one? Awareness. awareness. So another important thing is awareness is important, but when you listen to sound, you are not particularly thinking about awareness. Right? <coughs> and no need also. Because you already recognize awareness. I told you, awareness is important. The recognition of awareness is important. I already introduced you awareness. So that view stays back of your, head, back of your mind, behind your heart, the view. And then the motivation that you want to meditate with the sound, that, that's, the medita that's the motivation. So this view and meditation change the quality of the listen, listen to the sound automatically. So you don't have to worry, look for, oh, where's the, where's the awareness? I can hear sound, but the awareness where? So not necessary to look something extra. Yeah, but then there's uh, later the awareness without object or something like that, step by step, you can practice in the future, okay? So I think we finished today here, the talk. What time now? Yeah. So actually, I came to London. Um, my book publisher asked me to come here to say something about the book. But unfortunately, the book is not ready yet. <laughs> And uh, even the title is not ready. But the book, writing is finished. It's about the bardo, bardo, dead and dying. Th this will be the number fourth, number, f number fourth book? Fourth book. Fourth book. Mm. Sorry about my English, you know. Do you understand my English? Good, thank you. So uh, next year will come out. So the title, not sure now. So in the book, there's a lot of story about while I'm going to retreat, 
The first month, I almost died because of food poison. And uh, so I had this uh, wonderful experience. <laughs> <laughs> so it's really related with the Bardo. So I uh, talk about this in the book. And uh, um, next year, it will come out, I think. So tomorrow, I'm going to meet with uh, my publisher. Publishers here or no? OK, so tomorrow. Um, yeah, so now the session for Q&A. Uh, you're going to read or someone? Direct um, So basically, you can either use the mic to ask questions, or if you prefer to um, write your questions down and give them to the volunteers, you can do it that way, and the volunteers will bring them down to us. So if anybody wants to kick off, Um, okay, first here. Yeah. Hello, thank you, Rinpoche. I was wondering when, uh, when attending to the, the feeling in the body regarding a sensation, sometimes a feeling can be so strong that it overwhelms mm. you, and then even if it's anger or something, there's no way to stop it. Mm -mm, mm -mm. What is the difference between being aware of it or being stuck, being aware of being stuck to it? Mm -mm, mm -mm. Okay, so uh, although, as I mentioned before, awareness is always there, never change, but for the practical level, we are not connected with the awareness at the beginning, although we have but we are not connected with our own awareness. So we need to practice step by step, step by step, step by step. So at the beginning, when we have strong emotion, then we cannot aware. We feel like overwhelmed. That's OK, completely. So what we call, there are four techniques, kind of like four, uh, four ways. Not four ways. For, hmm? for approach, maybe. So the first is, I already mentioned, back to the sensation. There's emotion meditation also, but now sensation, back to the, before the emotion meditation, be aware of sensation is important. Without aware of sensation, you cannot practice emotion meditation. So sensation, be aware of sensation now is very important. So, that's the first one, what we call watch. So there's four, is watch, try something different, step back, take a break, four things. So watch, you already know. Second, if the emotion becomes overwhelmed, the sensation too strong, hot, or oh, empty, uh, pain, hurt, unpleasant, cannot breathe, feeling like, I'm going to die now. Oh, there's many feelings. So then you can stop. Then try something different, number two. Don't focus on sensation. Listen to sound. Just change your focus. OK, when you listen to sound, it feels better. Come back again. OK, overwhelmed. OK, stop. Listen to sound. Or watch your breath. Or even in the sensation in the body, don't watch the pain area. Watch the numb area. Numb, meaning maybe in the knees or hand or head. Or the the neutral sensation, neutral uh, part part of the body where there's a neutral sensation, you can aware of that. So this is the try something different. Number three, step back, meaning. When I practice uh, meditation with my panic, what I did is, hey, panic, get out. I'm watching you, right? So that motivation or that aversion 
fear, fear or panic, sometimes what I call panic or panic, is stronger than panic. And these are the behind, supporting the panic, stay in the behind of the panic. So don't watch panic, watch the fear of panic or aversion or the resistance or the belief. There's some background belief. So let's step back. Number three. And sometimes even you do that, it doesn't work. Then take a break. Most easy one, you know. You all know how to do that, right? <laughs> <laughs> we should take a break sometime. Uh, do some physical exercise, and special physical exercise is really good if you have a strong panic or depression or unhappy or too much emotion up and down, do physical exercise. And uh, read books or sleep also sometimes. Tired, exhausted, sleep. So take a break. So the four things. But there's the one thing which is sometimes what we call energy movement. So energy movement is after some time, when you meditate, after some time, then you feel something on your head. Like heat comes, heat. Moving, opening, closing, or from your spine there's tingling. Something like going up and down, or from your stomach there's warm feeling comes. Sometimes there's a vibration in the body. Sometimes pressure from forehead, throat, heart center, strong pressure. So that is sign of energy movement. So energy movement has four things. The physical sensation, which is I just told you, and number Second is sensory perception. See something. Colors, shapes, visions, or hear some sound, uh, music, or messages, smell, taste. So these are five sensory perception. And number uh, three is the sense of energy. Oh, Positive energy here, negative energy here. Mm, this uh, teacher has blessing, mm, good energy. Mm, that teacher has bad energy, giving me obstacle. Or uh, someone is, uh, you know, controlling me or spying on me or bl giving blessing on me, something like. And the last one is emotion up and down. So this uh, is not a bad. It's good. What we call transformation of prana bindu nadi meaning prana meaning energy bindu meaning like cells nadi meaning nerves so these are transforming when you meditate so the for the for the process then we have this energy movement so energy movement can be sometimes strong emotion comes feeling of when you meditate sometimes good sometimes more angry after meditation, you get dizzy, you know. <laughs> I suppose meditation is a benefit for me, but it may worse for me, you know. So, but it's a good sign. You have to recognize this energy movement. That's really important. If you don't recognize this energy movement, if you feel like something wrong with me, or, or I'm enlightened, <laughs> or I'm special, <laughs> or I'm crazy, then it's become a problem. So actually, it's not a problem. Next. If you could go back in time and speak to the eight-year-old you that was just beginning to learn to meditate, and you could give them one piece of advice about meditation, what would you tell your younger, younger self? Accept the panic. <laughs> Someone there, no? Okay, what there? Thank you, Rinpoche. Um, well, I started meditation several years ago, and in 2014, I attended this 10-day Vipassana, 10-day mm -hmm. Vipassana retreat. And um, for me, it was really like a door opened, and, and it was really, for me, changed my life. And then my daughter came, <laughs> and my life became very chaotic. Um, now, I felt, as I said, you know, the awareness is like, it, it just, I wonder if I have this attachment to, 
you know, the experience I had before. Yeah. I wonder how should I proceed? Thank you. Don't try to bring the past experience again. So experience sometimes wonderful, next day gone. And then some people, they really like that wonderful experience. So we try to bring back that experience. So don't try to bring that experience. You continue to be aware that experience may not come again, but it come in a different form, different experience. So that's another, really important. And another important is maybe you can meditate while you're having problem with your daughter. Uh, you need to build up this habit. habit. So maybe uh, you need to choose one particular event. Maybe whenever you are having lunch or dinner or whenever you are having something with your daughter, that time, remember the meditation. Particular time. Today also try to remember, you will fail. Next day, you will fail. Fail is good. If you fail more, that's better. So you're Chinese? Yes. So in Chinese, what you call failure is the mother of success, right? Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Sibai? Sibai. Sibai. Thank you. So try again, try again. Then you will build a new habit. So once you success with that, particular one event, then it's equal to other habit also. So you, everybody can build a habit, new habit. So you can meditate everywhere, anytime, under any circumstances. Eight years, eight or nine years before I came to UK, and I owned the television, and I saw the advertisement about a mobile, mobile phone company. And they said, you can use this brain or company everywhere, anytime, even in the mountain. You know? So I thought this is a very good advertisement for meditation. <laughs> <laughs> so I changed a little bit. You can meditate everywhere, anytime, even in the city. <laughs> so while you're driving, so in London, a lot of one way, right? So you go, oh, another one way. Mm -hmm. Oh, there, on one way. <laughs> so you, you will have a lot of time. <laughs> or oh, traffic jam is the best time for meditation, you know. You have to be in the jam for one hour. So you will have good meditation session one hour. You know? <laughs> so whenever traffic jam, meditate. Or you go to your home, whenever you open refrigerator, awareness. Oh, refrigerator, awareness. Refrigerator, awareness. <laughs> or going to toilet, awareness. Toilet, awareness. Something like that. So you need to build up habit. Meditate everywhere, anytime. Hmm? How do you practice detachment? Detachment. Hmm. So this practice, you're allowed to have attachment. And when you feel attachment, Watch the sensation in the body. I mean to people and materialistic things and just everything else in general, not meditation. Uh, attachment about something? Yes. Or detachment? Yes. How to work with attachment, right? So uh, when you attach up the, the people or money or whatever idea, the sensation comes in the body. I need that. I need that. Oh, chips, beans. <laughs> Whatever, you know. <laughs> Chips have been some... So there's sensation. So we have to watch that sensation in the body. So be just, just use that sensation as object of the awareness. Remind. Remind. You don't have to say, no attachment, no attachment. If you say, no attachment, no attachment, it doesn't work much. Sometimes attachment becomes stronger. But if you really lost with that, your mind, oh... Then you will, you will see the, like this, you know. Try this, everybody try this. A no, no, little bit like this. Close your, okay, close one eye. Okay, now look at this thumb. So this is the object of your attachment, okay? 
So now look at the thumb, look at the thumb, bring close to your eyes. Close. 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 Now whole world become thumb. <laughs> you're gonna see only thumb. <laughs> so that's the attachment. <laughs> Actually it's small, right? That's the not only with the, the, the things, even idea, anything. So once we go in there, and then we make it bigger, 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 and then we see the opposite. Oh, if I don't have this big problem, yeah, I have this wonderful, I wish I can have more. What should I do, you know? So we have to know this is created by our mind. We make mountain out of more, more here. So the perception how create this uh, attachment. So first, there's a view. Second, for the meditation, just watch the sensation. You don't have to say yes or no. Just watch, watch. Just watching, it will help. It will help. Number three, bring that into habit. The view and the awareness into everyday habit. So then you don't have to do anything with the attachment. It will liberate by itself. This question? Somebody here? No? Yeah. Okay. Is it on? Meditation, awareness, and sleep have become best friends. I tend to fall asleep every time I meditate. <laughs> How do I stop falling asleep during meditation? So that's good if you. <laughs> Especially in the night, if you cannot sleep, then just meditate. <laughs> you can combine meditation and sleep together. So how to do that? <laughs> when you meditate, then the sleepiness will come. You know, sleepiness? Feeling a little bit like drowsy, drunk, unclear, like that kind of feeling, right? So watch that feeling. Be aware of feeling of sleepiness. Let's see. Uh, maybe I will have the sleepiness. Relax. If you relax, then sleepiness will come. Hmm. Hmm, now a little bit sleepy. So just feel the sleepiness. Good morning. <laughs> so, when you just relax, then the feeling of sleepy, relax, drowsy, unclear. Just be with it. Feel it. Just feel it. Feel it. Feel it. Continue. Be aware of it. If you are lucky, the moment of you fall into sleep, if you still maintain that awareness, then the sleep will catch the awareness then all the sleep become meditation. So if you sleep one hour, you're meditating one hour. But, uh, but when you maintain the awareness and the sleep calm, and the moment of sleep, if your mind go to the chips beans, <laughs> no, cheese chips beans. So then it's normal sleep. But, but still benefit because at the beginning, you're with awareness. 
And special if you practice the awareness when your mind going to the sleep, that really affects the subconscious mind, the unconscious mind. So it is the, that meditation is really benefit for you. We all have awareness from childhood, but it's very difficult to teach awareness or mindfulness to a child. How can we at, le at least start teaching them from young age? Yeah, so for the child, you have to uh, know how to approach them. Not like, how to say, giving order. It doesn't work. And then if you give too much order, then they build up resistance. Next time when they hear meditation, oh, then no good. So you have to make it something like reward, fun, playful, and don't meditate too long for a child. Only a few, um, few minutes. Maybe ask them, like for example, ring the bell. So when the bell sound going higher and higher, ask kid, raise your hand, raise hand. And then lower the volume of sound and then let hand down, 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 up, up, up. And the awareness of the body, maybe put something, object, let kid lie down and put something on the uh, belly and feel it, that object, maybe dinosaur or something. So, feel something like that. As a cancer patient, could you give me any suggestions or advice from the Buddhist field? How to chant every day or sutra to do every day? Yeah, so if you have diseases, uh, you, you need to change the motivation. So the view and motiv motivation, these two are the really important factor. So the motivation uh, to want to heal the disease, and the view is the awareness is beyond disease. So try to understand that. And just whatever your um, feeling, the, the sickness, which part of the body, you can scan awareness. So when you move your awareness with the, with the meditation, with your body, so there's a, um, what we call prana, bindu, nadi, they all are moving. So the oxygen, the blood, the, this, this kind of like sense of healing also comes. So it, it will help, and special if you want to do any mantra, we use normally Buddha medicine mantra. There's one mantra called Deyata Om Bekanse Bekanse Maha Bekanse Asasamugati Soha. So you can look in the internet, you can find. So you can chant that one. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for all of you coming, and uh, <laughs> this time, So, so this time, uh, Chanda and all the um, supporters, volunteers, uh, can you stand up, all the volunteers? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> volunteers. All the volunteers. <laughs> hey, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and uh, this time, the Jimmy Rumbuchi is, is present here, and thank you very much for Rumbuchi's coming. Thank you.